Welcome back, Jared here once again. Um, the goal of this video is to show you how you can add images to objects and display them in a GUI uh, here in Java. <clears throat> so if you haven't uh, been following the whole series and you jump straight to this video, there's actually I think 11 videos uh, prior to this one um, that show how to set up a lot of different objects in our, um, in our GUIs. Um, what we have here in, is a table view and inside the table we have person objects and I can select, where's where we got to last week, or last video, um, <clears throat> is you can select a particular person object and you can click on a button and it will send that object to another scene where we could then um, uh, you know, pull out information for the object. So in this case, we were able to find out uh, Frank Sinatra's uh, first name, last name, birthday, and his age if he was still alive. So what we're gonna do is we're going to add it, the ability to put an image into that view as well. So an image wouldn't really show well here in a table, but it'd be cool if you could click on someone and then see, hey, there's their image. Um, <clears throat> now, one of the things that's a little broken with this right now is this button assumes that we've selected a row. And you know, if you think of it from a user uh, interface perspective, really I shouldn't be able to push this button if I haven't selected a person yet. So if I click it right now, we end up blowing up the program. Down below, we'll see the stack trace. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this to be disabled until the user selects a row. So let's look at how to do that. So first things first, we need to be able to access that button. Um, so we're going to need we're going to need to add in a uh, <clears throat> an instance variable for that. Let's call that the uh, detailed person. button and let me just go up here so when you go to pick your um, <clears throat> your your imports make sure you take the Java FX dot scene one there is also one I believe for Java dot AWT that will not work with Java FX so make sure you pick the correct button uh, then the other thing is we need to go into our scene builder and in here we need to connect this button to that ID so let me just hit save here. And then we can go back in here. Now if I click on this button, I can see there's the name of the button. And I can hit save. So now both our view and our controller know that a detailed person view button is, is that exact button. And if you remember, there's a, a method called initialize. Let me just search for that. That uh, gets called when uh, their GUI first gets launched. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add something down here. I'm going to say uh, disable the detailed person view button. So here I can say uh, detailed person view button. You can set disabled. hit save. So now when I go to run this, you go to table view. When you first go in, the, you can see the button, but you cannot use it, right? I can't, even if I select a row right now, I can't use it. It's disabled. So what I need to do is I need to add the functionality to the table so that if I click on this table, it recognizes that it has been clicked on and enables this detailed person view. So let's do that next. So <clears throat> in order to do that, we have to make sure, just went to the top here, we, we have uh, uh, an ID already defined for our table view. So we can access information about the table view directly. And all we're gonna do is add in a little method here. So let's just pick a spot, now put in a little comment.
And then in here we can say, uh, what was the name of our button again? Detailed person view button. We can say set disabled to false. Now what we have to do is we have to hook this method up to our table. So to do that, we're going to go back into Scene Builder. And I click on the table. So it's easiest to select stuff at a certain point right here from uh, right here uh, from the, the hierarchy section. And then here you can see um, all kinds of different things that can be done on a table. So if they sort, what do I do? On drag, on right. So um, <clears throat> if we scroll down. Let's see here, on mouse clicked, right? So that would actually um, be when someone selected a row. So we can say, we choose our method here, user clicked on table. Okay, and then we can go to save. Let's go back in and test it out. table view, our button's disabled, I click on a row, and our button's enabled, and I can go to it. So that prevents us getting from uh, sort of an invalid state <clears throat> in our GUI. Now the next thing we need to do is we want to be able to add an image to a person. And um, what I would suggest is that you have kind of two scenarios. Um, one where they don't give you an image, so you just put up a default avatar, and one where um, you, uh, you actually use the person's proper image. So the next thing we need to do is we really need to update the person class that holds information about the person. So if we go into our, our person class here. So when we set this up, so we would work with our table, we had first name, a last name, and a birthday. So if we want to add in um, an image, then we just need to add in uh, an image pieces, sorry, my apologies. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to say private image and let's call it, uh, I don't know, photo. Import. Again, see how it came up with the AWT by default? I want Java FX, right? So take the Java FX one first, hit save. Just checking one little thing on my computer here. Okay, now, <clears throat> um, <clears throat> this was the constructor that we used um, in our program. And it does not take in a photo uh, or a link to a photo. But we can, we can still set it up to a default. So what we can say here is we can say photo equals new image. Okay, And in here, you just put the, f the file name of the image. Um, so let's go, oh, I've got a couple, uh, couple options here. So I'll go into my GUI demo, where is that, GUI demo, here we go. And in the source directory, now you can put different uh, file names um, in here. I'm just going to paste them right in here for now. Uh, this is where this is where um, <clears throat> it will start to look for the files. But you don't have to, uh, you could put another, you could put like a slash images directory here and you could go into the, the actual images uh, directory, which is arguably a little bit cleaner way of doing it. And I'm gonna take, this is my default image. Okay, so all users get the default image, unless they specify otherwise. So I can say default image.png. Now, if the user, when they first signed up, did select a picture, what we'd want is the ability 
to create a person with an image. So what we can do is we can make a second constructor where they can pass in an image object. And here, what we'll say is this.photo. So here I say this.photo equals the photo that was passed in, right? So it's an image object, so it's passed in. Now this gives us the ability to either create a, a user with a default image, like a default avatar, which is very common, or when you're creating your user, you can select an image and, and upload it, depending on how you set up your user interface. They maybe could scroll um, through their local machine and find an image they like and upload it. Okay, let's hit save here. So now, um, <clears throat> we need the ability to see that picture. So if I go into my detailed person view, let's see, where did I put my, there's my person view, open it up in scene builder. So now in here, if I want to add a, uh, <clears throat> an image, I'm going to use something called an image view. I'm going to drag that on here. Everything's in a VBox, so let's do that. Put it in a VBox. All right, let's hit save. Now, what this allows us to do is we can actually uh, update this by simple get methods, same as we can get uh, first name or get last name. So <clears throat> if I go into our uh, person view controller, zoom in so you can read it a little easier. There we go. Okay, so <clears throat> in here we had we created labels, right? So all of these, their first name, last name, birthday, and age, they were just simple labels. And we can do something very similar here. We can say add fxml private image view, and we'll call it the photo. And then again, see how there's a swing version and a JavaFX version for the image view. Make sure to take the JavaFX version. We can go back into Scene Builder now. Click on my Scene Builder seems to. There we go. I can click on this and. All right, let's click off it for a second. Oh, interesting. And click back on it. Now I can set the ID to be photo. I hit save. And I'm going to go back into my controller class. So now, <clears throat> when I initialize the view, okay, so before what we did is we passed in uh, a person object. Okay, so if you remember in the last video, we created this special method called init data, like initial data, and we passed in a person, which we have as a, uh, an instance variable for this controller. And, sorry, and then we used that selected person to update all of our, all of our images. So here, we're going to need to do the exact same thing. And all we have to do to see the image is we'll say photo, set the image, and in here we'll do selected person, and we'll call a method called get image. Hit save. Now it's complaining because that method doesn't exist yet. So let's go into our person class and create getters and setters for the photo. So we'll say public uh, image, get image, return the, oh, we called it photo, didn't we? Yeah, return the photo. And then if we want to set it, we could say public void set image. And here we'll say this dot photo. Oops. Equals new picture. So again, because the person, right, is so we have a person class, and a person has a first name, a last name, a birthday, and they have a photo of themselves. So all we're going to do is 
we're, we're going to create these simple little get and set methods um, where we can get the image, right? And we'll return the photo. So if we go back into our person view controller now, you see that get image is set. So let's try, do a little clean and build, do a little bit of work here, make sure everything's good. And let's run the program. Go to our table view, select a user, go to our detailed person view, and there's our default image, it's Oscar the Grouch. Now with CSS, you can um, you can go in and you can uh, you can actually put uh, you know some nice borders around this to make the picture stand out and do different things. But in terms of getting an image showing, uh, that's what this video was all about. We've got that working. Now let's do one as well where we're going to um, actually use. Remember, we made two different um, constructors for a person. We had the the default constructor. But let's use one where we actually pass in an image. So I'm going to go into our table view controller where we had some dummy data. Remember we made this uh, method called get people. So if we go down here to get people, in here we created new instances of the person object. So I'm going to add in here for Frank Sinatra. So right in there, I'm going to say new image, and I just have to pass in the file name. So if I've got here a Frank Sinatra picture, so I'll hit rename, copy it exactly, come in here and paste it, and we'll have to add the import for an image, hit save. So now Frank will have a custom picture of himself, right? So each of your objects could have a picture of themselves, or we can have the default pictures uh, for Rebecca and Mr. T. So let's hit the play button here. Go to table view, click on a row, let's click on Frank, see the detailed person view, and see here we get the picture of Frank Sinatra. I go back, if I pick on Mr. T, and say detailed person view, now I'm going to get Oscar the Grouch, which is our default uh, default image. So I hope that uh, that helps you understand how to put an image onto your GUI. Um, <clears throat> I will update uh, GitHub, so if you need access to the source code, you can easily go there and get it. Cheers.